We're here in Blunham talking to Theo Stewart, who is what is known as a dog listener. Tell me, Theo, what does a dog listener mean and what's it all about? Well, we're not a dog trainer, which is about um, imposing your will and commands on a dog, and nor a dog behaviourist. I would say more um, a human owner behaviourist, showing, showing owners how to behave like leaders of the pack. Okay, and it's particularly relevant this conversation because there's been some tragedies recently yes. um, involving dogs. Yes. So how did you get involved in, in dog listening? Well, I myself had a Rottweiler and um, the difference between a Rotty and say a Jack Russell is obviously its size. So um, all dogs can cause harm, but um, you need to be on top of a dog that's big. And that's when I started this. How I, many years ago was that? Um, well, about six years ago. Yes, I couldn't obviously use physical strength, so I had to use a different method. And what would you say then um, is the biggest lesson that you've learned as a result of studying and doing this? I think I would say less is more. The more fuss and attention and homage people give to a dog, the worse it is. The less of all these things you give to your dog, the more it can just be a dog. Mm -hmm. And um, then it respects you. And do you obviously work with a lot of families who've okay. got dogs with what challenging behaviour? Yes, a whole range, but it all boils down to the same thing. I mean, it can be anything from aggression, barking too much, pulling on lead, being frightened of things, um, toileting indoors, all sorts of things, anything you can think of. It all boils down to the same thing, that that dog perceives itself to have a, have a job of being in charge of the pack. Okay, and what is a typical then behaviour that the, the owners, the, the things that they're doing wrong, what are they? I think they are paying homage to the dog. They walk in the door and the first thing they do is to greet the dog, which tells the dog that they're more important than, than the owner. And it starts from there. Anything the dog wants, the owner obeys. The dog says, play with me, the owner obeys. The dog says, feed me now, the owner obeys. And so gradually, the dog is made to feel that he's in charge when it should really be the opposite. Because if, if, it's a human pack after all, the dog is part of the pack. So what would, mm. you, what would your advice be to somebody who um, is going into a meeting a dog for the first time or um, a typical scenario of just walking into a house where there is a dog? What yes. would you well, what, what I say to people is your dog isn't the doorman. You are in charge of the pack. You need to greet the people. So the dog isn't the one to get to the door first. So the dog rushes to the door and barks. So you thank the dog for letting you know. Shut the dog somewhere else. Come in. Then... If it's my house, I then prime the person, please don't, please don't look at the dog for a while, take no notice of him so that he knows that you're higher up in the ranking. Then, then I let the dog out. And, um, you know, as the dog begins to get the message, it'll calm down very quickly, very secure to know that this is a job it hasn't got to do. And so basically, mm -hmm. the, your message is that the, it's not the dog's fault, it's the way that they're treated by the owner. Yes, it's never about the dog, it's always about the owner, everything. Even if somebody's had a dog that's been in rescue, say, five times, it is about how that dog's been treated by humans, mm -hmm. not, a, not a fault of the dog, yeah. in my opinion. Thank you very much, Cynthia. Okay. Thank you. Thank that's you. really interesting, and I'm sure we'll come back and maybe pick up on some other points that you um, you know about in the future. I'd love that. Thank you. Thank you.